In late spring of 2006, IKEA's British location started charging for their plastic bags. In almost two years since then, they have lowered their use of plastic bags by 95%. With this success, the IKEA people decided to extend this attempt to the American public. So, last year in March of 2007, IKEA started pushing the use of reusable bags in their U.S. stores. Their initial goal was to reduce the number of bags nationwide by 50% in the first year, from 70 million to 35 million. That's all fine and good, but this is the land of SUVs and muscle cars. We created the plastic bag. Actually, it was some German guy. Every year, the U.S. consumes 380 billion plastic bags, sacks, and wraps. We love plastic. We drink out of it. We make body parts out of it. Some silly Swedish people can't just take our plastic away. I had to wonder how drastic they'd gone to discourage people from choosing plastic. While they wouldn't let my camera in their building, I did go to take notes on how they display their in-store banging options. Upon first walking into the store, there are huge bins with large yellow bags. These are identical to the reusable ones they sell, except the ones for sale are blue. I suppose this gets people used to the idea of carrying around a bag that size and shoving items into it. At the checkout, you are bombarded with shelves of blue reusable bags made of tarp material. It's as though the blue bags are standing guard against delinquent shoppers trying to even think of using traditional plastic. Most stores that have cloth bags put them in the front aisle, but in no way is it this overwhelming. In the IKEA shelves, there is a small row of plastic bags that almost mocks the poor slob that would dare pick one of the frail, sickly, disposable bags over the much more robust reusable option. This all seems like a good effort, but does it actually work? Keep them laughing as you go. Just remember the last laugh is on you. Following the momentum of this change, IKEA is slated to remove all plastic bag availability starting October 1st, later this year. So the people in the blue building have cut down on plastic use, but they also have a cafeteria that uses real plates, glasses, and silverware, not wrappers that serve a 30 second purpose before going to the trash can. And the meatballs are delicious. The fast food industry takes a lot of flack for being a major contributor of overpackaging, and rightly so considering that the second most common type of waste in landfills is food containers. At times, the convenience of fast food may be too much to say no to. The average meal most likely comes equipped with a couple of wrappers, one for the burger, one for the fries, a cup with lid and straw, a couple napkins, and a paper placemat on the serving tray. While the napkin may serve its purpose, the food wrappers are really only used for the minute or so it takes you to walk to your table. The placemat is replaced with every customer and seems like it would be just as clean as the food wrappers, and is almost never made of the same waxed paper or foil that the wrappers are. So, unless you're taking your food to go, these oversized pieces of refuse really don't need to be there. But you don't have a choice in the matter, do you? 700-1903-1800 Can I just get a gordita crunch combo with no wrappers? <laughs> no packaging? <laughs> That's it. Are you sure you want no wrappers? No wrappers. I gotta make it pretty. Okay. And no wrappers. No wrappers. Thank you. You're welcome. This is the prettiest Taco Bell I've ever seen. Although they seemed a little bit confused at my request, my hosts did honor what I asked for. So, on to the next place. Hey, uh, number 10. Can I get it with no wrapper, though? No wrapper? No wrapper. Or on the fries or anything, just dump it on the place now. Alright. Would you like another one? Sorry, how did you put that? With no wrapper? No wrapper. You should say like a uh, started bag uh, bowl, right? No, just put it on the place mat on the tray. Let me see. Yeah. We are not allowed to do that. We have to sit it out in a proper fashion. Say so if somebody orders something like medium rare or something, we can't serve it. You have to be to our temperature and wrapped in our wraps and stuff. Oh. I mean, it's just, I mean, you can take it out, but when we serve from behind here, it has to be the working way. Okay. Well, I can put it in a tray for you or something like that, but 
No, I'm just trying not to use the wrapper. Mm -hmm. Once a couple back there, they have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, just the number 10 then. Do <laughs> you want the allergic inside? Uh, no, I do this one. I spoke with the manager a little more, and she explained her position. The problem is that the kitchen is in the back and separated from the front by a wall. The cook's hands are clean while the cashier's hands are constantly touching cash that is constantly changing hands. With this kind of separated system, there is a liability that a pair of grungy cashier mitts could at some point contaminate the food. The Taco Bell that I visited did not use the same system. It had an open floor, and the chef was the one who delivered the food to the counter. So my concept came to a premature end. I'll be paying for the goofy wrapping after all. On a side note, the employees at the Taco Bell were very intimidated by the camera, and probably would have given me my meal for free had I asked for it. I did revisit the Taco Bell just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Once again, I was able to get my wrapperless food, as requested, straight from the chef. If it is necessary to get the wrapped meal, then try to go for the option with the least packaging. A 5 for 5 type of option sounds like a lot of variety, but means that there will be 5 wrappers at the end. Also avoid meals that use styrofoam clamshells or foam take-home trays. At this point I've been trying to avoid styrofoam as much as possible. Few other materials on the planet are produced so widely with so little forethought. I've given up one of my favorite restaurants because they use styrofoam plates and cups. I suppose it would help if I write to them explaining my absence. Realistically, I know it would likely take a good many notes to change their mind, but we'll see. Society has come to look at styrofoam as a sort of necessary evil. While people are widely aware that styrofoam is not biodegradable, it continues to be used day in and day out. Being a petroleum product, it might seem that it would become less common as the price of oil continues to rise. However, styrofoam requires very little material to be created. In fact, it's composed of 99% air. Because of this, it becomes costly to transport it to recycling centers by truck or other methods that also use expensive petroleum. Pound for pound, styrofoam becomes one of the most horrendously inefficient materials one could ever think of to recycle, costing about $3,000 per ton, whereas glass comes in at a mere $89 per ton. Another problem is that the current styrofoam recycling process is extremely sensitive to contaminants. This means that food containers, or even dirty foam, need to be well cleaned before going through the process. Imagine trying to explain to a restaurant owner that he needs to pay to clean dishes that he won't ever be able to use again. Massively used and minimally disposed of, expanded polystyrene, or styrofoam, ranks as the second most common type of litter, with only cigarette butts being more abundant. On top of this, workers in polystyrene factories have shown neurological and hematological disorders. I still have the box to the computer I used to edit this video. Sure enough, it has a nice big layer of polystyrene which I've been trying to avoid. When deciding on any material, it's best to keep in mind where it will be going once you are done with it.